So I got this listing appointment because I went to a White Sox game four years ago. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is a day in the life of a real estate agent weekend edition. It's currently Saturday. It's 8.30. I've been awake for about 30 minutes. We are starting the day by writing an offer and then we got to go out to a showing, listing appointment. Then we're meeting a brand new client in Chicago. So it's going to be a nice, busy day. And I wanted to show you what a weekend as a realtor looks like. Let's roll. First order of business is marketing the listing sold. We got it under contract in actually less than three days. I put it under contract yesterday. So now we are going to edit the listing info. We're going to edit the status. We are going to make it contingent love doing that it is not 856 as you can tell and we are drafting an offer for another buyer client of mine we got to get this out the way hit the showers and hit the road all right ladies and gentlemen oh my goodness it is a gorgeous day i believe it's like 70 degrees here in the chicago suburbs it is now 9 49 a.m we have a showing at 10 o'clock so let's get to it oh and i have to add two more showings to chicago so we're gonna have a busy busy day all right ladies and gentlemen we're here at the first showing the client is a little bit late thank god because i need to get gas on the way because i will not have time at any other point in this day to get gas in my car and i was on like range was 10 miles because i was too lazy yesterday but anyhow we're here here's the lock box i'm gonna get inside we are switching cameras it is now 11:03 a.m we have an appointment at 12 it's a listing appointment that we got to get to and i want to explain how we got this uh, appointment because you know the more you become a real estate, the more deals you do, the more people you meet, the easier the deals come, right? So this is a, and this is the power of networking and social media put together, okay? Things are happening behind the scenes that you have no idea. So stay tuned. If, if you want to get business through networking and social media, here is the tip, okay? You have to meet people in real life. You have to like them. You, they have to like you. And once that happens, you want to connect them to your social media. And then till the end of time, you want to deliver valuable, entertaining content to that person or your entire database. And that is how you build a business based on social media, branding, marketing, all that stuff, right? So I got this listing appointment because I went to a White Sox game with my cousin and two other people four years ago. Four years ago when I was basically a nobody, still a somewhat of a nobody, right? I went, I didn't even want to go because I hate, I hate baseball, but I went and I met him, uh, what, uh, it was one of my cousin's friends, I met him there, we had a great connection, we talked a little bit of real estate because he had just bought a house, like everything was good. I followed him on Instagram, he followed me, and that was the end of it. I never DM'd him, I never talked to him, we never had a conversation after that, none of that. He simply stayed up to date with my content on Instagram, and when it was time for him to make a move, he called me and said, hey, I've been following you for four years now. I see you working consistently. I see the level of service you give to your clients. I'd love to give you the opportunity to list my home uh, and go from there, right? Now, granted, he's interviewing other agents and that's, hey, I got no problem with competition, right? But the fact that he reached out to me first was actually a huge, uh, I think, in my opinion, was a sign of respect and I appreciate it greatly. So that that's how it's done. Now, mind you, it's four years. So when you're doing things today, you're like, oh, I met 10 people this week and no one's buying a house next week. Duh. It's First of all, that's not enough people. Second of all, of course, it's not going to happen right away. But the longer you're in business, the higher the chances of you of getting business. That's it. So what's happening now uh, in the next 30 minutes or so is I have already prepared his net sheet. I've prepared his CMA. I want to go through his CMA, make sure I'm, I'm on the page with everything like that. And then I'm going to print out the listing agreement, print out the disclosures, and phew! Out the way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's now 11.46 a.m. and it's time to head out to this appointment. All I did there is prepare my folder of things and the things I bring is my client satisfaction guarantee, the listing agreement, the disclosures, the comps, and then I have the net sheet right behind it. And I just printed the MLS sheet for when they bought it to make sure all the information I have is accurate. All right, folks, we are done with the listing appointment. It went overall, I would say, fantastic. We were in agreement to all the numbers, the net sheets. There weren't a lot of objections. He had just a couple questions about marketing, which <laughs> we got that down packed. And that's about the end of it. He is interviewing another one of his friends. And me personally, I'm not a pushy salesperson, even though I have all the skills and knowledge to kind of like close somebody right away. But as an agent, despite what the training tells you, in my opinion, you got to learn to read the room, right? If, uh, you, if he's the type that doesn't like to get pressured, you can't put him on the edge, right? If he's not just on the tiptoe about making a decision, 
you pushing him to a decision, I don't think is the best case scenario. And with that said, we are driving over to Chicago right now, and we have about, what, a 41-minute drive. I'm going to grab another cup of coffee on the way, just because I didn't finish my last one. <laughs> And uh, we're gonna see some houses together. And this is a client I got from a referral uh, yesterday. I got this client. We did an impromptu buyer consultation at uh, at Starbucks. And right away, and this is something you gotta identify as uh, as, a, as a professional. We get on a Zoom call, and right away he is asked trying to run into like machine gun questions. Right? I had to take control of that conversation, slow it down, ask simple questions like, all right, how do you pronounce your name, yada, 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 and then take control and ask and direct them to where we need to go, right? You never wanna lose control over the conversation with your clients because then you cannot dictate the pace and actually say what you need to say that's gonna help them the most. That being said, he loved it all, and he's like, Aaron, can we see some houses tomorrow? Uh, the last agent, I lost out on a lot of houses because their availability was just not there, and you know what? It is what it is, that's why you cannot be a part part-time agent she was a full-time mom and a part-time agent uh, which you know and also she also had a full-time job in the suburbs so this is why you're at a disadvantage she called me I said absolutely so we're gonna go see a couple of houses today build that face-to-face -face connection and then hopefully close him because he's in a hurry he's got a good budget all right ladies and gentlemen we are here at the park a block away because parking was a nightmare but we're here this is uh I think we are in Ukrainian Village. It's a neighborhood in a little bit outside of downtown Chicago. It's actually pretty nice. We get some phenomenal deals. So we're here. Let's go see the place. All right, first showing in the city is a wrap. We got one more to go to, and then afterwards, since I'm in the city, I might go buy some dress shirts and then go home and submit the offer that I wrote up this morning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at showing number two. And uh, personally, I like the other one a little bit more. But we're gonna get inside and we're gonna find out. All right, the showings are over. It is 3.06 p.m. So we are a little ahead of schedule. I'm heading over to the store for uh, dress shirts and seeing what I could get my hands on because I do love dress shirts. A man just picked up a drink from the from the trash and fully fully finished it. Anyhow, right now I'm heading over to this place called Tie Bar, which is a dress, basically a store that sells dress shirts, ties, suits, all that. And that's funny, you know, I always like to upgrade my clothing. I had a closing yesterday. So I'm definitely buying a new green suit and I just want to add a couple more dress shirts to my, uh, you know, to my reserves as they say. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it back to the residence. This is my condo if you don't know. And uh, here's what we got going on. It's currently 4.20 p.m. Uh, most of the work where I have to go somewhere is done. Now I need to submit the offer for the buyer this morning. It's in my inbox. I never actually pressed send because I was not ready. And then we had to look up houses for this specific buyer that we showed uh, in the city. Want to make sure I send him all the private listings, all that, everything he needs to get rolling on that. And then that's pretty much it. And then we're going to be clocking out for the day enjoying this beautiful, wonderful evening. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We made it, we are inside. If you don't know, I don't spend too much time in this condo. I kind of have it just to have a place to call my own, but I'm technically still living at home, but I, you know, I pay the mortgage every month, I pay my HOA, I pay my utilities, I have it fully furnished, but you know, that's the joys of being an adult. You can do things like this. So I love it, and a lot of my stuff is in, my appliances are in, I've been cooking lately, and uh, my living room's kind of a mess, so you guys don't need to see that but everything is going well. This is actually a phenomenal rental property and I am dying to rent it. However, I will always need a place of my own, so I am waiting to buy my second property as a primary residence and then I'm gonna rent this one and then whatever cash flow is off this, I'm gonna add to the budget of my next place. So it currently cost me $1,200 a month total, excluding utilities to own this place, right? So if I could rent it for say, 1500 right my next budget for the next place is 15 to 1600 dollars and in the grand scheme of things i end up paying the exact same thing and i'm owning two properties this is what i tell everybody to do when they're young when you're in your 20s you could be flexible you can move around okay you could take advantage of putting three or five percent down if i was 21 with a w-2 income i would have i don't want to say it. it's not it's a different video anyhow it's time to quickly do some work and to submit that offer and then look up houses for all of my buyers, but first the specific one I showed today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now, I don't I don't even know what time it is. I think it's almost six o'clock, but the work is done and I'm clocking out and I'm gonna be going out, hanging out, having a great time with my beautiful girlfriend. So I'll see y'all later. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.